Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to dual boot your Windows 10 computer with Windows 11. So this will apply for Windows 10 and Windows 7 and Windows 8. Basically, as long as you have the hard drive space for it, you can run it alongside Windows 11 in a dual boot environment. So this is a pretty straightforward process. will apply to computers, desktops, laptops, tablets, by all major manufacturers like Dell, HP, Acer, Asus, Toshiba, Lenovo. Just kind of running through them all, I guess. I don't know why. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. First thing you want to do is make sure you have the ISO file on your bootable media. If you haven't already done it, make sure you've downloaded the media creation utility for Windows 11. I'll have a link in the description as well as you can also view one of my videos on how to download the Windows 11 ISO file and you can burn it to the USB flash drive. Again, you can check out my channel for that. But anyway, once you have your bootable media, we're ready to begin. So we're on our Windows 10 machine, as you can clearly see. And we're going to go ahead and open up the search menu. Type in Disk Management. Best result should come back with Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Go ahead and open that up. You want to make sure you allocate enough space to this new partition. So generally, I believe Windows 11 wants you to have 65 gigabytes of hard drive space. We're going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to set it to 15. Make sure you have enough though. In your case, if you can go up to 100, you probably should. Um, just generally speaking, again, if you go too low, it won't actually let you install to the drive. As I found out right before um, recording this video, I believe the minimum. Now, don't call me on this. I think they wanted at least 11 gigabytes of hard drive space. So I had to scrap that whole thing and now we're remaking the tutorial. And this time we're going to do 15 gigabytes of hard drive space. So if you wanted to have a calculator open, that would be... Oh, we're going to just right-click on our main partition here and select Shrink Volume. And you want to go enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. So I believe it's 15,380 is 1,024 times 15. You can enter in whatever you want here. Again, you want to make sure it's large enough. So you can always open up a calculator, which you're welcome to do. And again, 1,024, this is in megabytes. That's why it's a big number. And I'm going to multiply it by 15 in my case. So it's actually 15,360. So once you have it, as you see it on my screen, again, your number may be different. You're going to go ahead and select shrink. And once you're done with that, close out of here. And then you're going to restart your computer and go to the boot menu. So go ahead and restart. And depending on your computer manufacturer, it might be the escape key, F2, F8, F12, for example. Those are the most common ones. But you want to get over to the boot menu. And you will have your Windows installation media inserted into your computer, whether it be a USB flash drive or a DVD at this point. In the boot menu, we're going to go down to whatever drive we have our files on. So in my case, it's on a DVD, or that's how the system is reading it. So I'm going to select the CD-ROM drive. If you're using USB flash drive, you're going to select that option as well, or in lieu of. So press any key to boot from the DVD. I just selected that, and now it should be booting off of our DVD here. Just give it a moment. And once you've confirmed your language, time and currency format, and keyboard or input method, go ahead and select Next, and then select Install Now. And if you have a product key, go ahead and enter that. Otherwise, select I don't have a product key. And you want to accept the Microsoft software license terms. Select Next. Select Custom Install Windows Only. And now we're going to select our unallocated space here. So it's going to be this 15 gigabytes of space that you can see right here. So you can see they recommend at least 20,000 megabytes, but it's still going to let us go though anyway. So that's what we're going to do. Then we're going to select next and give us a few minutes to install here.
select the correct keyboard layout and then yes again. If you want to add a second keyboard layout you can, otherwise I'm going to go ahead and select skip. We want to accept the license agreement. You want to name your PC here. Doesn't matter what you want to name it, just name it your name, I guess. And then select next. So it needs to be no more than 15 characters and no spaces or special characters. So I'm just going to call it John and then next. Give it a moment here. So how would you like to set up your device? You can set up for personal use or set up for work and school. I'm going to set up for personal use and then I'm going to select next. So if you want to sign in with a Microsoft account, you can. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and turn off our internet. And then we're going to select the back arrow. And then we're going to go ahead and try and create a local account. So if you have an Ethernet connection to your computer, you want to disconnect it. Or if, if you have your router, you want to go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to go ahead and switch that off here. And give me a moment. And I'm going to select set for personal use. And then next. Again, go ahead and enter in your computer name. Keep in mind, I just turned off my network connection here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and enter in a computer name. It has to be different than your other name. And then select Next. Go ahead and create a password if you choose to do so. Otherwise, just go ahead and select Next. Again, I just turned off my network connection and went back a couple steps. And now you see it's letting me create a local user account on my computer instead of a Microsoft account. So that's the only way you got to do it. You have to actually disconnect from the Internet and then Microsoft will let you use a local account. So you can go ahead and choose your privacy settings at this point. Usually I unselect almost all, if not all, of these options, just in my own personal preference, and then I select Accept.
So there you go guys, pretty straightforward process. Now we have Windows 11 installed alongside Windows 10. So as always, thank you guys for watching this brief tutorial. I do pause it to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.